want to start by saying last Sunday, uh, there was just an urgency, an urgency of what I believe is the awakening of the church. Amen. A kingdom, a global awakening that if we don't catch many people eventually will miss the very the very thing that God has wanted from the very beginning is for his people to be with him the rapture and a lot of people don't want to talk about the rapture a lot of people don't want to talk it's kind of like one of those things that nobody wants to die but everybody wants to go to heaven right but the reality is that Jesus is coming for his bride and he's coming quickly and if we don't get our heart right we're going to miss it and I really believe that last Sunday when the Lord said what a waste of time it would be to be in the house of God and to leave the exact same way See, the God that I serve, the God that I read of in the Bible is a God of miracles. Is a God that heals, a God that restores, a God that delivers, amen. A God that will liberate his people, amen. <clears throat> and when we come, however you came, fighting, angry, they drug you here, but you made it. Come on, you made it. And if we left the exact same way, then we really just wasted our time. I'm at a place in my life where every second matters now. I don't like missing things and I hate wasting time. And so when we come into the house of God, if we left the same way, my God, we can't blame God. We can't blame the church. You can't blame the pastor. You got to look deep within your heart and understand, was my heart even open to receive? See, when I was bound and lost and, and, and a mess, amen, so far from God, my heart was closed. But it was God that knew that I was crying and feeling alone and, and feeling lost and feeling broken. It was the God that created the heavens and the earth Amen. that knew me before I was in my mother's womb, the Bible says. So God knew I was unhappy. God knew I was miserable. You see, the people may look at the smile and people may look, amen, at how good we can say, I'm doing fine and all these things, but God knows and he examines the heart. It's the heart that God will examine if we make it to heaven. And then on Wednesday, when we were here, the Lord shared about how we are not to take for granted the anointing of God. The anointing of God that is so precious and so tangible, amen, that many times we're in the house of God or we're under the unction of the Holy Spirit, but yet we can be too busy, our minds somewhere else. Your mind can be on your Instagram right now. Your mind can be on what you're gonna eat later. Your mind can be a, in a place of your work already. And you're missing what God is wanting to do in this moment. The anointing of God is so precious. The anointing of God must be protected because the anointing of God could easily be grieved. Especially at the altar. We can't take the anointing of God for granted. You got to protect what belongs to God and what God gives to his people. You will not be able to go to the smoke shop and say, can I get four, 
five or ten more dollars a piece or can I get, you know, twenty dollars of the anointing? No, the anointing comes from the crushing, from the brokenness. The anointing comes from the weeping. The anointing comes from God hearing the cry of his people. So today I want to continue where where God is leading us. And, And I said this earlier, probably weren't expecting this for Mother's Day. But I'll tell you what. We honor you mothers and we're not trying to take away from you. But what God is doing in this hour, we need to be in line. We need to be in tune. We got young kids. We got people dying every day. Amen. And if we miss what God is doing, amen, this could be the last day for somebody in this place. We can never take for granted what God has given us. God has given us another day. It's a gift from God. So today, if I could just start by saying, it's very important how we are to be in tune with the Holy Spirit because the enemy, the devil, is a deceiver. The enemy will dress people up, amen, and make them look a certain way, but that's not who they really are. You could be wearing a tuxedo and you can have a smile, but on the inside, you're a mess. On the inside, you're suicidal. On the inside, you're angry. On the inside, you're so bitter. On the inside, you're still hurting from the trauma of your childhood. See, the enemy does a good job. The enemy, the spirit of antichrist is a mimicker. And when you're not listening to the right voice or you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit, you will begin to fight in the wrong way. You will begin to attack and hurt everything and everyone that is standing by your side. Because you're looking through a distorted lens. You're looking through a lens that has been, amen, altered. The heart has been moved The heart has been infiltrated. The heart has become hardened. And now we begin to listen and even believe the lies of the enemy. We read this in the scriptures. When God had given King Saul a warrior, a man that played instruments, a boy that would play the instruments to take away the torment. But yet, because Saul was not in his right mind or in the right spirit, he begins to attack David. Not only does he attack David, he even begins to attack his son. We got to be careful because when you're under deception, you listen to the wrong voice. Who are you listening to today? The voice of the Holy Spirit is the one that every believer needs to be listening to. In the book of John chapter 16, this is what the Lord says. And Jesus is talking to the believers and he says, And he, when he comes, somebody say the Holy Spirit. And he, when he comes, will convict the world about the guilt of sin. Now you notice he doesn't say condone. God knows where you're struggling. God knows your battle. God is mad at the sin. God is angry at the enemy for what we've been enticed in. The very thing that we've been drawn to. God loves people. God is not mad at the people. God is mad at the devil and the sin. Can I get an amen? Amen. He came to convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a savior. And about righteousness and about judgment. In verse 9 it says, about sin and the true nature of it because they do not believe in me. And my message about righteousness, personal integrity, and godly character. Right there, I could drop the mic, and that's the problem with the society in this day. 
Come on, you, you all, you all seen in the news what, what Hollywood and, and the entertainment industry and Mr. Diddy and Daddy and that's why the brother kept changing his name. But you can't dodge God. Everything that is taking place will eventually come to light. I'd rather come to God and say, God, this is where I'm at. God, I'm struggling. God, will you help me? Instead of God having to expose you. You see, when it says in verse 10 about righteousness and personal integrity and godly character, that is what the enemy is after. He's trying to change the character. He's trying to get people to be somebody they're not. We may have made a bad choice, but that doesn't define who God created you to be. There is still time to come out from the lies. There is still time, amen, to open your heart, to believe, amen, and to cry out to Jesus. We are seeing it over and over. Witches renouncing, Muslims coming to Christ. We're seeing this happen. We're seeing, amen, atheists finally open their heart because they are tired of being lied to. They are tired of being abused by the enemy. The enemy wants to change their character. He says, because I am going to my father and you will no longer see me. About judgment, the certainty of it, because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged and condemned. The spirit of antichrist is full force right now. The devil don't have a shame. And the devil is not hiding. When I grew up in, 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 in the 80s, amen, you used to have to play music backwards to hear the messages of the Antichrist. Come on. Listen to Hotel California, spin it backwards and you'll hear. Or listen to a Led Zeppelin song, play it backwards and you'll hear. Now, straight up. The spirit of Antichrist will come out and mock God. Jay Z, Beyonce, and all these other, Katy Perry, and all these people that are secular, that our children are drawn to, they're not hiding it. Look at the performances on the Super Bowl, on the Grammys, and the awards. You see how demonic they are. The devil is not hiding. The devil has become more bold and more cold. And here's what I need you to catch. Has the devil become more bold and more cold or has the church become more lukewarm? Have the people of God closed their eyes and their hearts to the truth and begin to accept the lies? That's what we need to discuss. That's what we need to talk about. Because the enemy, he is changing the identity. He is changing the character of the people. He wants people to think, well, I'm just a drug addict. I'm going to be a drug addict all my life. No, you're not. You're a child of God. God can set you free. God can deliver you in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is saying to them, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, full and complete truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the father and the message regarding the son. And he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. You don't got to go to a witch. You don't got to go in and pay money to get your palm read. You don't got to tune in and, 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 and be enchanted. You don't have to be deceived or lied to any longer. I challenge anyone in this room that has never had an encounter with Jesus Christ that for you to say, God, I don't believe in you. 
God, I don't give my life to you, but if you're, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. This is what I did. I said, God, I don't want to serve you, but God, I'm tired. God, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with you. I love what I'm doing. I love the drugs. I love this and I love that. But God, I'm miserable and I'm tired. And God, if you're real, God, I need you to show me. I challenge anyone in this room, if you wanted to know if God is real, if God can change you and if God can set you free for you to begin to just say, God, show me if you're true. Show me. Show me that the life that I'm living is a lie. Show me that everything that I've been told or everything that I've opened the doors to spiritually is wrong. And watch God begin to reveal himself to you. I was hearing a testimony the other day of a church service. It was kind of a conference, I guess. And there was a Jew there, an Orthodox Jew. Orthodox Jews don't believe in the Messiah, which is Jesus. And people are getting saved radically. And the guy says, I can't believe in, in, in Jesus. He says, if, if Jesus is real, he says, I want Jesus to let me know. I want Jesus to speak to me and I want him to speak to me now. The man is speaking that to himself. And the guy, obviously he's challenging God, but when you challenge God with an open heart, God will meet you. God will show you. But you got to be willing to listen. If you ask God to do something and he reveals himself to you and you don't, then you say, oh, well, I don't believe anymore. It's not God, it's you. And the man is there and he is saying, I need God to speak to me. I need God to tell me. And there's a young girl there and the young girl begins to speak in Hebrew. And she begins to speak in another language, in another tongue that he can understand. And all of a sudden this man begins to say, this little girl is saying, and the little girl is speaking in a tongue, amen. This little girl doesn't know Hebrew, amen. And she is saying, he is saying, I am Jesus. I am Jesus, amen. And I'm here to tell you that if you've never encountered the risen king, that if you would just leave here today, or if you would open your heart and say, God, show me who you are. I want to know you. I want to know you. And with an open heart, Watch what God begins to do. Watch the hurt and the trauma in our lives begin to disappear. Watch the lies, amen, and the deception and the bondage and the yokes that we've been placed under by the enemy begin to break. Watch the chains begin to be loosened. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches us about the Father. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches us about the Son. It's the Holy Spirit that will reveal to us the future. That's why the Bible says that the things of God are foolishness to this world. Because if, if a person is not spiritual, nothing makes sense. And they even go as far as mocking it. In verse 14, he says, he will glorify and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it to you. It's all you have to do. You may not believe, you may choose not to believe, but I'll tell you what. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess. And he says, in heaven, under heaven, all those that deny Jesus that are in hell will stand before God one day and have to bow their knee and say, he is the son of God. And also here on earth. Satan is using distractions. So he can destroy God's greatest creation, mankind. 
There is nothing more than God, that God loves than you. And think about that for a moment because you might think I'm real cute and all that, you know? You look in the mirror and you smile and come on, only me. I, when, when, I, when I was before I got saved, amen, and it was Friday night, I would be staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> come on, somebody. Amen. I wasn't saved, so if I was going to sin, I was going to sin in style. <laughs> See the end? <laughs> wants us to fall away from obedience. Obedience to God's word. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. This word is so precious to God that he would not go back on his word. In Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Here's what I want to share with you in, in, in the next 10 minutes, and, and then I'll be done. Some of you are probably like, thank God I got to get out of here. Amen. But I promise you that if you open your heart, God can change your life. Because hell is real. We can't believe that heaven is real and not hell. You can't believe that there's a God and not a devil. The Bible says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. The heart is what the enemy is after. The things of God, the things that are holy, are the things that we must protect the most. We must protect the anointing of God on our lives. We must protect everything that God has given us. How does he come in and how does he begin, amen, to change the people's hearts? Because it's going to happen. The Bible is very clear that there will be a falling away in the last day. An apostasy will take place. They begin to believe the lies of the enemy. Before you fall out of God, you become complacent. Before you walk away from the Lord, you begin to entertain. Before you say, I can't do this anymore, somebody you've been hanging out with has been speaking into your life. <laughs> or maybe when you're all alone, it's the things that you're watching on TV or on your YouTube or on your Netflix. Something has begun to influence you and you are now losing the very purpose of your creation to fellowship with God. You got to guard your heart. The enemy perverts the truth. When you go down here, does anybody know where Smart and Final is? I think it's down that way somewhere. I'll turn around, but down that, Okay. Tomorrow, go to Smart and Final and walk down the aisle and it says beer, wine, and spirits. Why does it say beer, wine? I thank God that they're at least being honest. If the non-believers believe in spirits but the church don't, something's wrong. The problem is that the church has become so scared because they're not ready to cross over into holiness and into righteousness. They're not wanting to walk, amen, away from the sin. They're not wanting, amen. They still want to reek of marijuana. They still want to consume, amen, pharmaceutical drugs. Or they still want to dabble in pornography. They still want to be part of the world. The Bible says you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. You can't have fellowship with the world. We talked about this on Wednesday. You got to choose here today where you're going to spend your eternity. 
Your eternity. Listen, your mama can't take you. Your daddy can't take you. Neither can your boo. My wife can't guide me to heaven. I have to work out my salvation with trembling in fear. I got to make sure that I, that I spend the rest of my life with Jesus. And so do you. And that will happen by the way we live our lives. You can't eat of the bread and at the table of the Lord in fellowship with demons. You got to guard your heart. You see, because it begins with your ears. It begins with your eyes. But what begins to get altered is your heart. And sometimes we think that can't happen to me. The Bible says that Lucifer was an anointed cherub. He was anointed. And yet... Pride entered his heart. When you begin to think you don't need God, or even just, hey God, I got it right now. You know, I'll call you later. That's pride. How about when we read through the book of Proverbs and we read all these great Proverbs from the wisest man in the world? The wisest man. And yet, when we read, he was such a fool after. Because of who was speaking into his ear. Because they were speaking different things into his ear. His heart was turned from God. God allowed him to build the temple, the temple of God, where the presence of the Almighty would dwell. David desired to build the house of God, but God said, no, no, David, you're a warrior and you have too much blood on your hands, but your son, your son Solomon, he's going to build the temple. And Solomon is there, and he is so grateful to God. See, he was so grateful that God would even consider him. I believe that that's what we need to do, is stay grateful that God has even chosen us, that God has saved us, that God redeemed us. Because the moment you begin to lose your gratitude for what God has done in your life, you've taken one step backwards. You find yourself complaining. You find yourself finding faults in everything and everyone, but you fail to see Your heart. Solomon was there. And as he was giving God a sacrifice, the Bible says that the Shekinah glory of God came down in that place. The glory of God filled the sanctuary that even the priest could not come in. He encountered, amen, the very glory of God. Now listen to me. The Shekinah glory is different than the presence of God. Yet Solomon encountered the Shekinah glory of God, but yet he was building later on poles to foreign gods in the church, in the temple of God. You don't just fall into sin. Come on. Some of us before we were saved, amen, When you were going to the club, amen, you made sure you were looking fleek. You made sure your eyeliner was on deck, amen, because you were going to go there to be noticed. The men in my era would open up the shirts and, you know, put a patch of hair right here. (laughs) Don't do that. Don't do that. But they prepared to go out. It, you don't just fall into sin. You don't just fall into a bed with somebody. It's a lot of planning. You don't just say, man, I'm going to walk away from God and I'm just going to go back and get high. You've been exposed. And what Paul says, you've been bewitched. 
Who has bewitched you, he says. Who has cast a spell on you? You've got to guard your heart. You've got to be careful of who you're around. You've got to be careful of who's speaking into your life. you even got to be careful of who's praying for you. I always tell the guys in the men's home, they're out there. Oh, pastor, I met another pastor and he wanted to pray for me. Uh, did he pray for you? Yeah. From a distance? No, he laid hands. Don't you let anybody lay hands on you. You don't know if that pastor's bound with pornography. You don't know if that pastor slapped his wife that morning. You don't know who he is. You don't even know if he's a witch or a warlock. A witch is not going to come and tell you, oh, I'm a witch. Can I pray for you? Discernment. Some of you are looking confused. Let me help you. Jesus goes to the city of Gadara and there's a demoniac there. A man filled with the legion of demons. The man falls to his feet. I mean, falls to his knees in a form of worship, the Bible says. Because there was something inside of him that desired to be free. But the moment, immediately, the demons took over. Jesus cast out the devils, the demons, and where do they go? Into the pigs. So demons need a body. So what does that mean? That demons jump. They'll get it later, Lord. They'll get it later. Demons need a body and demons are always jumping. That's why sometimes you got to tell everybody, stop. Because demons are always jumping and needing bodies. And if we are not discerning of the hour that we're living in and we're letting just anybody pray for us, it's my job, our job as pastors to teach you. I don't, I don't let anybody, I, I, don't, I don't care how big their TVN studio is or how many followers they have on, on Twitter or Instagram or, or YouTube. If I feel something, I, 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 let's pray from right there. And there's been even times that people have tried to pray for me and I say, you know what, I don't receive that prayer. It's not God. Because it's a discerning of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, what Jesus said, He is the teacher. He will teach you and He will lead you in all truth. We got to wake up. And some people are seeking so much attention. Oh, yeah, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Brother, pray for me, pray. For me. They go here, pray for me here, pray for me there, pray for me here. And then they wonder. Why all of a sudden they're battling depression? Why all of a sudden they're battling, battling pornography? Why all of a sudden they're battling a murdering spirit? Why? Because demons are being transferred everywhere. Ah, uh, you're not going to hear this on Mother's Day. But I'm going to preach it. Welcome to Living Word Harvest of Merced. Where we care about one thing, getting people into the kingdom of God. I'm an equal opportunity offender, amen? But I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. Amen. Pastor Nikki was up here worshiping, amen, and I said, oh, Lord, exactly where we're going today. I know it. Why? Because the Spirit was leading her. She's a woman of God that is led by the Spirit of God. She's not going to come up here and just speak things because she feels like it. She's not going to, oh, I just, I hate this speaker, dumb speaker, and begin to rebuke it. No, that's, that's, that, the, the spirit doesn't operate like that. The spirit of God is the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel. The spirit that brings truth to help every one of us make it to heaven. To not allow the devil to be jumping from place to place. You see, the heart is where the enemy Oh, the heart is what the enemy is after. And we have to guard it. And we have to protect it. Anybody here have a safe at home? Don't raise your hand because everybody's going to. I'm going to go to his house. In 
you're safe. You don't put your telephone bill in your safe. You don't put your stuff that you got, that, those earrings that you got from the 99 cent store. In your safe, you put away your valuables. In your safe, you protect it because it has value. How much more should we be protecting our heart, guarding it? The Holy Spirit, man, he's, he's like a Doberman pincher right here. Anything that tries, ah, don't let nothing by my heart, Lord. what is valuable. You don't allow anything to come close. You protect it from people that are speaking lies. Do you know that the enemy will use anybody to try to get you just to slip up? I said this before, but not everybody that's in your circle is for you. There's people that want to see us fail. There's people that are jealous. There's people that don't believe in the call of God. Oh, God can use you. You? I remember when you were out there all cracked out, messed up, tore up, sleeping with everybody and anybody. You? You're anointed by God. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he changes your life. He changes your mind. He changes your heart. He sets you free. He liberates you. That's why we talk different. That's why it, it, the transformation, yes, it, it's, it's, it's very noticed, amen, on the outside after a period of time. But the transformation is deep within the heart and in the mind of an individual. You gotta, you gotta hang around with people that are speaking truth. If they're not like-minded people, amen, we read this the other day. The Bible says, what fellowship, amen, does darkness have with light? Unbelievers, amen, with believers. The enemy has one plan. See, God has a plan for your life. Jesus said it in John 10.10. 10. He says, the thief has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's the plan of the enemy. But God said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundant. You got to choose whose plan you're going to believe. You got to choose and whose will you're going to walk in. You got to choose down what road you're going to go down. Because the Bible says very clear that the road that leads to destruction, it's wide. It's paved beautifully. It's got nice lights. It's all lit up. But the, the road that leads to salvation, the Bible says very few are going to find it. The only way you can walk on the path of the Lord is by being in tune with the Holy Spirit. He will guide you, lead you, and direct you. He's the spirit of truth. Lord, where am I going? And the Holy Spirit says, I'm with you. Just keep walking at the sound of my voice. Where everyone else is heading in the wrong, it's popular over there. It's cool over there. Everyone is partying. It has to be that way. Even people in the church deceive. How many churches in America today, there's no move of God? Dead. I want one thing, to see you saved. That's God's plan. To see every one of us with him in heaven. I'm going to close with this because I don't want to be called a liar for my time that I told you that I would be given. I got more. But the 
Lord holds me accountable too. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. you got to trust in the plans of God for your life. You're either going to believe or you're not. Nobody can twist your hand. Nobody can force you. Listen, nobody can drag you into the gates of heaven. Amen. I'm telling you that you will have to make a choice and a decision here and now. Because the Bible says that tomorrow is promised to no man. Tomorrow's not promised, guys. It's not. But I'm too young. You know that young people die too? But I'm too old to change. No, you're not. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. If anybody ever tells you that God can't change you. That's the very first person you need to unfriend. You're not going to be popular. In fact, you may be talked about. You may be ridiculed. Jesus said, you will be persecuted for my name's sake. You know that you can have as much of the Holy Spirit as you want. But I believe that many times the devil lies to people when he doesn't let them believe that this walk of faith that God will guide you. He wants you to be in control of your own life. The Bible says, he who tries to keep his life will lose it. But he who loses it for my sake will find it. People stop seeking. People stop hungering. I close with this. I close this. You want to know why people stop seeking? Are you ready for the truth? The truth why many people stop seeking and desiring more of the Holy Spirit is because the deeper you go, the conviction is different. This isn't a church that tells you, you can just, as long as you're only drinking one. This isn't a church that tells you, well, they, 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 they legalized it now, so you know, you could. This is a church that's going to tell you the truth. Because if the Holy Spirit can set you free, how could you still be in bondage? Either you haven't opened your heart and really encountered him, See, because the Holy Spirit is very easily grieved. The Bible says that he is there and he is with you. As Jesus is. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. And he says, but whoever opens his heart, I will come in and I will abide with you. And it's not a bad conviction. It's a good conviction. Conviction is good. When there's no conviction in a believer anymore, there's probably no more hope. And let us not mix conviction with condemnation. Condemnation tells you you're a big dummy. Nobody loves you. You've messed up. Amen. Nobody can forgive you. I told you you were good for nothing. They're laughing at you. They don't want you at that church. That's the devil. God is not going to tell you that. You know what the holy conviction of God is? 
that he hung on a cross, gave up his life, and he bled for every one of us. When he said it is finished, he meant it is finished. See, when the holy conviction of God comes upon your life, even if you fall, you feel it and you're like, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I hurt your heart, God. Why? Because you feel convicted. God is really leading this church into repentance. And I know that it's because he's coming quick. It's coming. The angels of God are saying, Maranatha, Lord, Maranatha, Lord, come quickly. The saints of God are ready. But God is saying, not yet. Not yet. I still got a son out there. That may not agree with everything, but is listening. There's still a daughter out there. Who hasn't been revealed the truth and the knowledge of who I am. There's still a person out there who's tired of doing drugs and, and being addicted and, and bound. But he's coming. And he's coming for a church. Not a church that is defeated. Not a church that is complaining. But a church that is on fire, a church that is spirit filled, a church that believes in the power and the anointing of God that can break the yoke and can liberate anything and anyone. He is the chain breaker. He is the way maker. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is the alpha and he is the omega. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah and he came as a baby, but he's not coming back as a baby baby anymore and he's not a lamb anymore he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah and he's coming back with the sword and he's coming back for his church and you and I are his church we are the ecclesia of God and we amen we need to turn to God we need to understand amen that he didn't die for this world he died for you